What's going on YouTube? This is Chris with Eddie's Speed Garage and today we're working on a 2014 Dodge Grand Caravan. We got a right rear caliper that's leaking. You can see there's brake fluid all over the tire and it's all in the inside of the wheel. So we're gonna get that caliper changed out today and show you how to do that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is jack up the right rear of the vehicle. There's a spot right here where the rear control arm meets the pinch weld part of the frame. We're gonna jack it up right there. So we get that rear tire off the ground. All right, YouTube, so with all those Pittsburgh jack recalls and stuff, you can never be too safe. We got our jack underneath the, the pinch weld there and our jack is sitting on the same spot we mounted it up from. But I'm also gonna take the tire that we just took off the vehicle and I'm gonna put it under there also just, just for safety. So we can, uh, we'll take it over here. We'll set it right next to the jack. So now we got three, three fail safes. All right, YouTube, so here's our new caliper. It looks like it comes with the bracket, some of the clips. We got a bolt here, and it comes with our little washers for the banjo bolt. So we're going to get this installed, show you how to do it. All right, YouTube, so here's our brakes in the right rear. We got the caliper leaking. You can see it's all wet there. It's leaking somewhere around the boot. I took a look at this car the other day, got parts ordered up, and we're gonna replace that. I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, so you can see here, this is our caliper, this portion here, this is our caliper bracket. We're gonna need to take off this bolt here, which I believe is a 13 millimeter. Um, I just checked it a minute ago, it's on my socket. Yeah, so we got a 13 millimeter. This is your e-brake cable here. Looks like this car has already had it removed at some point. Somebody cut it out and just didn't want to deal with the parking brake anymore. So yeah, we'll just take this bolt here off to 13 millimeter and we'll take the bottom bolt off, which is also a 13 millimeter. But first we're gonna wanna take this banjo bolt off here. That's what feet connects our brake line. So we'll take that off the caliper, at least crack it loose. We'll get a drain pan under here so we don't make a mess. All right, so we're starting with the uh, the banjo bolt. We got that cracked loose. Once you do that, it'll probably start leaking a little bit of fluid if your car's got anything left in it. It's looking like we're not gonna leak so much. So we'll just take that all the rest of the way out. We're also on a little bit of an incline here, so to, make, to aid in making or bleeding the brakes because air would like to float upwards with gravity. So that'll help. These are the banjo washers that we'll have to replace when we install the new caliper. All right, so now we're on to taking out these 13 millimeter caliper pin bolts. Here's a tip. You don't want to take, take the top one out depending on the side of the vehicle you're on until you at least break this bottom one loose because what's going to happen is when you try and crack this one loose it's going to want to pull the whole caliper out and get in your way so i got them both broken loose now and we can just go ahead and loosen them up all right so now that we got our caliper pin bolts out we can go ahead and slide the caliper off and you see that's where our leak was it's leaking somewhere in this boot here so definitely needs to be replaced you don't want your brakes leaking <laughs> okay so this is our caliper bracket we got our brake pads here our little shims for our brake pads and you can see here that the brake pads got a little bit of uneven wear but the back pads still got some life on it customer didn't want to replace them they're a little tight on cash so we're just gonna transfer because this new caliper actually came with the bracket, so we're gonna give them all new parts. We're gonna transfer the, the new bracket onto the car and I'm gonna show you how to do all that. Okay, so these are our caliper bracket bolts. They are an 18 millimeter on this vehicle. 
They're usually pretty tight. We're going to see if we can break them loose with this 3 8 long ratchet. All right, so we got our caliper bracket bolts loosened. We're just going to remove those. And then we'll take the pads out and we'll transfer them over to the new bracket. All right, so this is our brand new caliper. There's a couple things I wanted to talk about before we install it. So that is our piston for our caliper and we're gonna wanna adjust that out as far as we can and get it to fit with the new pads and everything assembled on the car. Because there's a thing with these, these minivans or Chrysler minivans, Dodge or whatever, they, uh, if you don't adjust that all the way out, you'll get a spongy brake pedal feel and it, cause the piston will come out, it'll meet the brake pad, but then it'll travel far back into the caliper and it'll, it'll always have that long travel time before it actually contacts the pads and the rotors. So you're gonna wanna get that as close as possible turned out. You can use a, a adjustable tool to get that to turn out and you should be good to go. Okay, YouTube, so we're gonna take off these caliper pin bolts so we can separate the bracket from the, the caliper just to uh, to aid in putting, uh, putting our new pins on and so we don't have all that stuff in our way and we can adjust that piston out. All right, so to break those bolts loose, I just have it loosely put on with the caliper bracket bolts so we can knock these loose, they're a little tight. All right, so this is our brand new caliper bracket separated from the caliper. We're gonna take our new clips that were supplied with the new bracket and we're gonna install them onto the vehicle. You're gonna want this long part to go inboard to the caliper bracket and we'll just snap it into place. Gotta watch out, these things are pretty sharp. Cut your fingers pretty easy on them. All right, so now we're gonna install our bracket back onto the vehicle. I forgot to mention, this uh, it's a little dust cover. I think it's actually like a shield for the e-brake. The e we're gonna put that on, it goes on the bottom, somewhere around here. It'll fall, pretty much fall into place. I'll show you how it goes when we go back together. All right, so you can see this is our little e-brake parking brake shield here that just sits on there like that we got both of our caliper pin bolts in now we're going to tighten them down all right so we got our brake pads here this was the inboard side it's the one that's worn a little bit more and you can tell it's got the little markings from the piston on there still so we're going to slip that one into the rear it also has a little wear mark so when this is time to to replace it's going to squeak all right, so to get these brake pads in can be kind of tricky. You're going to want to come in at an angle from these clips and just slide it in and then push the pad. Yeah, see, it's tricky. You want, because it's got this, this little lock that keeps it from uh, sitting on the rotor. There we go. So that's into place just like that. We'll show you on the outside. It'll be a little more clear. So you're going to want to take your brake pad and you'll come in at an angle, slide it into both of those little clips, and you just kind of work it in there. There you go. Brake pads are in there. Make sure that your brake pads move freely. If you're reusing your old bracket, you might have to clean off some of the rust. Since these are new, I'm not worried about it. You can see our brake pads both move freely. So. All right, YouTube, so this is our disc brake rear caliper kit from Harbor Freight. It's by Maddox. This is what we're gonna use to uh, get this piston turned back out. You're gonna wanna twist it counterclockwise and that'll make that piston come out of its bore. All right, so we're gonna wanna figure out which, which one of these adapters is gonna fit our caliper. Just judging by the looks of it, I'm gonna say it's gonna be number six here. So we're just gonna take 
we got the two pins on the that adapter we're gonna see if they fit in there so that that's a that's a fit those two pins fit good now we're gonna install our tool and turn that piston out all right so here's our adapter on our tool we're just gonna take it set it in there and try and rotate this piston out it's gonna be a little tough you just want to press in and turn at the same time you can see it's starting to come out of its bore right there all right so now we're going to test fit our caliper with our rotor and pads installed see how much play there is so you can see there it's still got some play we could probably turn it out one more turn and see where we're at okay so i only turned it 180 and it's too much so we're gonna have to turn it back another 180 we have to do 180 increments because there's a a notch here on this piston and that notch is gonna go on this this uh, little button on the pad if you don't have that button in the notch on the piston you're gonna have seized brakes because the piston is never gonna fully come off of that that button so you okay so we got our caliper back on, made sure that the piston was in the right notch. Now we're gonna tighten our caliper pin bolts down. You just make sure that when you're tightening them down that this pin doesn't spin. I will just be sitting here for days. So. Hi YouTube, so this is our new banjo bolt and our washers. So we're gonna make sure we got one washer on the end of the, or the bolt head and we'll take the other one and it'll pinch on the line all right youtube so now we're going to hook up our line to our caliper they come with a little rubber grommet to keep air out but first we got to get this old washer off it helps to usually use like a, a screwdriver or a pick you just kind of try and work under it all right so now we got our our brake line there's no washers on either side you want to clean up a little bit of the dirt on there that was sitting under that washer it's on both sides and we got our washer with the banjo bolt we'll take that put it on one side and then we'll take our other washer and we'll set it on the other side of the hose and then we'll take it and just bolt it right up all right, so you can see we got our bolt on there, and this this line is squared. It'll sit flush up against the caliper. You're gonna make want to make sure that your line, your metal portion of your line, is coming down, facing down towards the ground, and you should have your hose on right. Now we'll go and tighten it up. All right, so now it's all back together, and all we're gonna have to do is bleed the brakes. I will try and show you the best I can on how we're going to do that, but I'm going to have to have my helper go and sit in the car and pump the brake pedal for me while we bleed the brakes. Alright, so here's our brake reservoir here. Before we start bleeding it, we just got to make sure we got it full. I already filled it up. It's at the top there. So we'll have to keep an eye on that while we're bleeding the brakes out. Make sure the fluid stays high. and. We'll start bleeding them. So we're going to start bleeding the brakes. This is our bleeder screw here. Depending on how much fluid we lost, we might have to bleed all four brakes, but we're just going to show you this one. Hi, right, YouTube. So, like I said, that's our bleeder screw. We're going to show you this on this caliper. It's the same process for all of them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell him to push the pedal all the way to the floor. Then I'm going to open the bleeder and then I'm gonna let the fluid or air come out. I'm gonna wait a couple seconds, probably all I'm gonna get is air. And then I'm gonna close the bleeder and then I'm gonna tell him to lift up on the pedal. And then he will go back down on the pedal. I'll open the bleeder and we'll just keep repeating that process. All right, so here we go. All right, down. So we just heard a little bit of air come out. Now we're gonna switch it back to on and we're gonna close it up. All right, back up. 
down. Open it back up again. Close it. All right, back up. Yep. All right, down. You might not pick it up on camera, but I can hear the air escaping right now. So I'm gonna close it again, and I'm gonna let him know to bring the pedal back up. All right, back up. I'll show you one more time, and then we'll shut it off and finish the rest of this. All right, down. Crack it open one more time. Let the air escape, close it. Then get your friend to release the pedal and just repeat that process until you start getting fluid and no air. All right, YouTube, so we got the brakes bled and it looks like our pedal got firm just by bleeding this one caliper. So the brakes actually didn't get bled out too bad from the leak. So now we're just gonna, I also, I took this off during the bleeding procedure just to help Get our get our tool on there we're gonna wrap that back around and then we'll just cover that up and then we got brake fluid everywhere so we're just gonna want to take some brake clean and some paper towel and just wipe down this whole caliper area so we don't get any residual drips in our driveway all right youtube so that's gonna be a job well done we got the new caliper on and the brakes blood pedal feels good it's nice and firm now all that's left is to torque our wheel here and give it a test drive thanks for watching please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos